are you planning a trip to the beautiful island of Tasmania with fantastic scenery, beautiful beaches, unspoiled wilderness to delicious food and wines? Tasmania has loads to offer for visitors. With so many amazing places to visit and things to do, it is important to plan your trip so that you don't miss out. I have traveled Tasmania over 5 months and these are my top tips to help you travel Tasmania. National Park Passes A National Park Pass covers entrance fees to national parks and standard facilities to national forests and grasslands. It is not verified in some places but in Cradle Mountains and Maria Island you will need a national park pass for entrance. You can buy this online for duration of your visit. Drones are not allowed in national parks. Flying drones in national parks are not allowed in Tasmania. No public transport. If you are traveling in Tasmania, hire a vehicle from day one. The main form of public transport is buses and there are no passenger train services between towns in Tasmania. I suggest you book a car in advance before arriving in Tasmania. If you don't have a car, the best way to see the island is by joining a tour. There are many guided tours to visit Hobart, Bruny Island, Port Arthur and all the main tourist destinations. Try to avoid driving at night. It is not advisable to drive in most areas in Tasmania after dark due to busy wildlife activity compared to the mainland. Roads are narrow. Most roads in Tasmania are single lane. Some roads can also be narrow, winding and have sharp corners. It is more similar to driving in New Zealand. So go slow, stop off and enjoy the sights along the way. Love some extra time for driving and expect the unexpected. Prepare to drive on gravel roads. There are gravel roads in Tasmania. Check road condition in Google Maps or TripAdvisor reviews while planning your trip. In some cases, you cannot avoid gravel road. As an example, there is a 18 km gravel road with to visit Cape Bruni Lighthouse in Bruni Island. When you hire your car, make sure you consider driving on gravel roads. If traveling from Blue Lake to the Bay of Ryers in East Coast, there is a 40 km gravel road. I would recommend not to drive through East Coast Road, instead take the road via St. Helens. There are some things that are hard to catch in a short day trip like Aurora Australis or Bioluminescence. I have two separate videos on chasing these on Tasmania, but it may not be ideal to target in a short trip. Beware of snakes. If you are doing a lot of bushwalking, there are three types of snakes and all are poisonous. We haven't seen them near residential areas, but in bushwalking, we do have two vocations of spotting snakes and they are active only on summer months. Pick the right season of the year for your attractions. There are some attractions that are only available on specific seasons. As an example, lavender farms best to see in summer months. Penguin weaving is better to weave from September to March. For tulip farms, best time is September till December. Whale watching is available during winter season, May till July and September to 10, September to November. Make sure you book attractions in advance if needed. We have seen most tours, cruise rides, train rides get fully booked fast so make sure to check out what is available and what is not during your visit times 
food convenient food stores you find on the mainland like kfc McDonald's, Subways are hard to find in Tasmania. You will only find franchise food options near main cities. So make sure to keep enough food and water during your trips. But make this an opportunity to visit local cafes and markets for an authentic food experience. <laughs> okay. Weather. Unlike other parts of Australia, Tasmania is colder. Even during summer months, it is chilled at night, around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, and lots of fog during winter. There are some places that start snowing during autumn, so prepare yourself for cold weather. If you are after wildlife, Maria Island is the best place to see kangaroos and wombats in their natural habitat. In addition, there are some options to visit wildlife sanctuaries where you can visit rescued animals and a lot of Tasmanian devils. We'll go back and forth between a burrow, underneath the grass, providing both meat and milk for the little one. Accommodation. You will find lots of accommodation options as per your budget in Tasmania. There are camping sites, backpackers' lodges, motels, Airbnb and luxury farm stays in most locations. Hiking If you enjoy hiking, Tasmania is your destination. Lots of hikes and walks in many parts of the state. There are multiple day hikes like Overland Track or Three Capes Track if you want to spend few days. Or there are a lot of day hikes and walks to enjoy if it is your thing. How long do you need to stay in Tasmania? Well. There are a lot of places to visit and I have a bucket list of over 150 places. But there are some things that you can avoid because they provide similar experience in multiple places. As an example, um, cruise rides in Port Arthur and Prony Island have similar experience and many convict sites have similar view. And you don't have to drive longer distances between attractions in Tasmania compared to other states in Australia. Even a day in Hobart will allow you to cover multiple attractions. But make sure to spend less time in main cities like Hobart and head out to small towns to see what makes Tasmania so special. So I would suggest one to two weeks would be enough to cover main highlights of the state, assuming you are not planning on multi-day hikes. I hope you enjoyed today's travel tips to travel to the only island state in Australia. Enjoy.